This is the session uh, which is termed Design Matters, the potential of social protection systems to deliver during crisis. And um, um, I would say all three papers were inspired, of course, also by the most recent crisis, but also more generally by the question how well suited are our systems to deliver when people need them urgently. So um, we have today with us um, Adnan Jahir and Yuka Petile, who will present the first paper. Adnan um, is working with Uni Waida and has a PhD from the University of Insubria in Italy. And then we have Yuka Petile, who is uh, the forefather, the father of Southmont, so to say, <laughs> who is with the University of Helsinki uh, and with Watt. Now, um, they're going to be presenting jointly. And then uh, we have uh, Miguel Lino Sarasua, who will present uh, a paper and, uh, followed by Annalena Oppel. Miguel is with SOAS in London, and Annalena is with LSE. So we have a lot of people from London here today, actually. <laughs> so with that, I'm going to take more of the time, and I will hand it right over to Yuka. Morning, everybody. Um, so this is a joint work with Adnan, who's here, and uh, in fact also with uh, Ravi Kambur of Cornell University and, and the chair herself, Pia. And uh, what we do in the paper is that we compare the poverty reduction uh, impact of targeted versus universal transfers uh, during crisis times. So. Uh, we at WIDA, we think that the, I mean, because one of the key goals of tax is not only to uh, raise revenues, but also to contribute to equitable distribution of income, that's why we also often uh, analyze taxes and transfers or benefits uh, at the same goal. And so this is one example of, of such a study. Let me start with a little bit of background. So, of course, we know that there's vast analytical literature on, the, uh, on social protection policies in developing countries. And there are various um, studies out there which try to uh, investigate the extent of um, social protection offered uh, by, the, by the current systems, including by the World Bank and the uh, colleagues at the so-called uh, Commitment to Equity Project, CEQ for short. Uh, but in fact, I mean, quite a bit of this work looks at the sort of, a, if you like, steady state impact. So in normal conditions, um, the, the poverty reduction uh, impacts of social policies. Uh, but there's very little formal analysis on how tax and benefit systems fare during crisis times, when incomes change. There's informal discussion by the World Bank. There's a book out in 2020 about so-called adaptive social protection policies, but it's it's pretty informal. So what we try to do in this paper is that we analytically examine uh, how different targeting approaches uh, perform uh, when, when people's income change. And we do it uh, uh, using a micro-simulation approach, and that's why I'm lucky to uh, have Adnan as a co-author because he's an he's expert. And we have a little bit of um, analytical uh, uh, thinking uh, before we, we embark on the, on the microsim uh, part. So as I already alluded to, uh, of course, the key objective is tax and benefit uh, and, and transfer systems is to alleviate uh, long-term or chronic poverty. Uh, but also, uh, these systems should provide social insurance. And in the developed world, these would be uh, programs like unemployment insurance or health insurance. So uh, people who, who were not poor, but who are not able to work anymore, then get some cushioning uh, provided by the state to their, to their, to their consumption because they, become, uh, they begin to be eligible for these benefits. So this can also be examined via the lens of so-called automatic stabilization. And, and, and with this we mean the automatic in, uh, increase in benefits and then a reduction in taxes when people's incomes decline. And a colleague uh, at Wider and University of Helsinki, Kwabena Adua Babio, has a paper on the extent of automatic stabilization uh, for developing countries. And he finds that the extent is very, very small in most low and, and, and lower middle income countries. And it's much smaller than in the case of developed economies. 
So Norway and Finland, for example, uh, cushion something like 50% of the income loss to people who lose incomes, whereas uh, the system in Ghana provides uh, uh, an order of magnitude less of, of cushioning. And we believe there are three key reasons for this. Uh, one is the sheer size of the government, which is way smaller in developing economies. The second is that there's a large share of informal workers who don't pay the tax. So if they didn't pay the tax in, to begin with, when their incomes decline, their tax burden can't go down. And the third reason is that the many of the benefits uh, that are available are so-called uh, of the proxy means test type. And these don't react to changes in incomes uh, at all in the short term. So what are these proxy means test type benefit PMT for short? So these are benefits uh, uh, which are uh, which are calcul where the eligibility is calculated on the basis of household level indicators, um, which measure the assets and the household composition, and a score is created. And then if the score falls below a certain threshold value, then the household is deemed poor and uh, the household is eligible for a benefit. Now, if these conditions change, the, the eligibility can only be uh, 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 tested whenever new information about the household characteristics is gathered. And this happens every, th every, every third year, every fifth year. So in the meantime, if somebody uh, 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 loses incomes, uh, the benefit system doesn't adapt. So uh, that's the backdrop for this study, where we, where we, where we try to analyze targeting uh, or, or not targeting the benefits when crises occur. So we ask whether the, whether the system should be targeted as it is now in many developing economies, in, including in Africa, using these proxy means test transfers, or should it be more universal? And of course, the, the, then, the, then the, uh, the, uh, the other end of the spectrum is a completely universal benefit, universal basic income, for example. But of course, there, there are some middle, there's some middle ground, and the benefits could be so-called categorical, where they go to a certain category of, of households, like, uh, uh, like households with older members or households with young children. Um, and we think that there could be a trade-off. Economists love trade-offs, and here's one. So if the targeting works in uh, quote-unquote normal circumstances, uh, then uh, almost by definition it's the, it's the most uh, uh, cost-effective way of reaching the poor. But when shocks occur, and if the shocks are of the type where the profile of the, po of the poor changes, then the initial targeting may not be, uh, may not be uh, the, the correct one anymore. And, and this is what we try to then uh, 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 examine per, bo, first uh, uh, with, a, with a small analytical exercise and then with simulations for the case of Ethiopia. So uh, we have a couple of theoretical points in the paper. Uh, so, the, uh, so the first one is, is, is more or less what I already said. Uh, that if the benefits are appropriately targeted before the crisis, uh, they may or may not be uh, appropriately targeted after the crisis has occurred, depending on, on how incomes change. In particular, if the, if the crisis, like the coronavirus pandemic, mostly hit people who were not originally uh, recipients of these transfers, uh, then um, uh, the, the, the targeting efficiency is worsened. Uh, we also show, uh, we think for the first time, that there's a link between social protection budget and, and poverty reduction. And uh, uh, the, uh, the poverty reduction in, uh, uh, increase uh, is in, uh, so, so we get greater poverty increase in universal shock in targeted systems in comparison to, uh, to untargeted systems. 
And let me highlight that a little bit more here. Uh, so here's a, thank you. Here's a chart where we have R on the horizontal axis shows the uh, resources available for the poverty reduction programs in, in, in society. And in the vertical axis, uh, you can think that as, a, as the poverty rate. And we are comparing two systems, uh, U and T. Uh, uh, T is a targeted and, and U uh, uh, is an untargeted system. Now, of course, if resources are zero, then there's no difference between the two systems. I mean, obviously, because you, if you have zero shilling to spend, then, 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 then there's, uh, there's zero poverty reduction as well. Uh, now, uh, the targeted system performs better uh, when then resources start to increase. So that's why then the curve is steeper, so the poverty reduction is, is more for any resources spent. Uh, so this is on, during normal times. But a mirror image of that is that the, if resources then decline, and you are somewhere, do I have a pointer here? I don't know. Anyway, let's forget it. Uh, if resources decline, and you are somewhere in the middle, uh, and that can be seen, I mean, that's uh, one way of thinking of that, is that uh, the, uh, society becomes poorer. You can see what happens to poverty. The poverty increase in the targeted system is actually greater than in the universal system. So that would be the, that would be the trade-off. So the predictions of the, of the theoretical exercise, if you wish, is that the, if budgets are small relative to the overall poverty gap, like they are in lower-income African countries, targeting matters relatively little. You get very small poverty reduction in any case. Uh, poverty levels could well be higher in more uniform systems. That's because targeting, by, by definition, is uh, more effective. But the increase when shocks happen in poverty may be smaller in more uniform system. And now I hand over to Adnan, uh, um, who, 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 who then shows how we try to tackle some of these issues in the case of Ethiopia. Thank you, Yuka. So my presentation focused on describing the uh, social benefit system in Ethiopia and to uh, display results on the three uh, types of benefit arrangements. So uh, PSNEP or the Productive Safety Net Program is the major uh, social uh, protection system in Ethiopia. Uh, the program launched in 2000 Five in collaboration with uh, development partner, mainly in the rural area. Then, following 2060, the program expanded to cover major urban area, including capital addis. So, this uh, PSNP, which is a type of uh, PMT, but uh, most of the identification is done by communities at local level. The background assumption is local community or in neighborhood better knows who is poor than the government. So uh, this PSNEP program has two wings. So it offers uh, uh, support for uh, conditional and unconditional types. Condi for the conditional benefit, the household must have at least a single member who could provide labor service. So we use ETMOD, the Ethiopian Tax Benefit Micro Simulation Model, which is a family of models developed by SouthMod Project in Africa. So these models simulate income tax, direct taxes, and this uh, benefit program. The ETMOD is a static model. It doesn't show the impact of policy change in at macro level, but the output from ETMOL can be used to show 
or the effect of the policy in using CG models through integration based on uh, the need of the researcher. Currently, ET mode uh, cover up to from 2014 up to 2020 policy system. It uses the uh, input file compiled using the socioeconomic survey. So we consider two shocks, the COVID shock, actual COVID shock, which we computed based on the deviation of 2020's GDP from it is counterfactual uh, number, which compiled using the uh, change or through the uh, extrapolating the, uh, the linear growth from 2070 up to 2000. 90, which is pre-COVID period, and then the agricultural shock, which uh, literally 10% reduction in agricultural income. Then having this shock from macro, we imputed in uh, the micro simulation model by uh, transiting the randomly uh, individuals in paid in employment to unemployment with uh, zero income. So we have uh, three system scenarios. The existing PMT, which is a productive uh, safety net program. Uh, uh, in this case, the, the beneficiaries remain the same, both in baseline in uh, crisis cases. We have categorical benefit. We use simple category, like the number of kids, if the household, uh, uh, kids in the household more than four, or uh, if the individual is more than 65, gets the benefit. And then simple UBI, universal basic income, distributing equal amount of money for everyone. Then we uh, also simulated a scenario with the ex expanded budget uh, for the uh, individual receiving in the baseline case, just by multiplying the benefit amount by tenfold. Okay, so we see here the main results. The, uh, when we see the uh, poverty headcount for the three scenario in the, in the first, uh, in the second row, there we don't see any change. This is due to the tiny budget allocated for the benefit program in Ethiopia. Uh, there is huge poverty, on average more than uh, 43%, but the budget allocated is very smaller than what is needed to pull out all pull from the poverty line. So in order to, I mean, uh, eradicate in Ethiopia poverty, government has to allocate more than 140 billion per annually, but what currently is spending is uh, around 3 billion. This is why we see uh, a small uh, changes across uh, the benefit scenario, which is support the theoretical framework you discuss in the lower, use, based on the lower budget amount, uh, given the higher poverty rate in Ethiopia, all the uh, benefit arrangements uh, reduces uh, poverty. But we see a change when uh, benefit amount increased by 10%, so in this case, PMT uh, perform well, better than the remaining benefit arrangements. Then we tried to see what would happen if the profile of the poor changes. Then we implemented five times higher COVID shock. In this case, uh, uh, most of the individual lost a job due to the magnified shock. COVID shock is where uh, none poor in the baseline case. So now we see the paradox. PMT with higher benefit lead to lower uh, poverty line, both in uh, uh, normal as well as in uh, crisis time. But a system 
which was ineffective in normal time, become more uh, effective in reducing uh, poverty during the crisis. So PMT, which is lower in uh, uh, reducing a, during a shock time, but uh, fare better than the other uh, in, at normal time. So the concluding uh, statement is social uh, assistance budget is lower in Ethiopia. And then the poverty uh, uh, during a crisis, those who were not covered better by the uh, uh, benefit system suffer a lot. And PMT system also works better with a higher budget. Thank you.